Welcome back to Broken Bobby's Transformation page. If you are new to the page, in 1990, I became involved in the drug gang world. From 92 to 06, I spent a lot of time incarcerated. I tell these stories to let you know it don't have to be you. If you're young and thinking about trying something or you're figuring out how to get out, these are my stories of this lifestyle and how it affected me. And eventually I got out and transformed my life. So let's get into today's story. All right, guys, as you can see by the thumbnail, this is the night I caught my first sales case, part two. So when I left off, the CHP had just pulled up and I'm at, I'm, I'm on the 60 freeway in the, I want to say like the Montclair area and Ramona. Uh, you know, I may be wrong on that, but somewhere out in that general vicinity. Uh, if you are new to the channel, subscribe, smash that like button, drop a comment, and share this video if you know somebody that may enjoy, enjoy this sort of content. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell and hit all so that whenever I drop a new video, you'll be informed and you can check it out when you're ready. Okay, so here I am. Got shoes and rocks and all kinds of stuff under the tires trying to get some traction. Can't get out. CHP rolls up. Moment of truth. So keep in mind, I had took the stash up up the off ramp and hit it in behind the bushes there by this little dental office. And, uh, you know, so there's nothing in the car. Everything was up there stashed away. And the CHP pulls up. And, you know, he asked me what had happened. And I I was, I had already thought of the story I was going to give that, you know, I had gotten into a fight with my girlfriend and she kicked me out of the house. So I was heading to a friend's house in Anaheim to spend the night. That was the story. And, uh, you know, he, he's like over by the car, kind of sniffing around. And he says, you've been smoking marijuana tonight? And marijuana wasn't legal at this time, but I, I wasn't smoking marijuana. There had been marijuana in the car. A lot of marijuana, but, you know, that wasn't it. I was chain smoking like a mother on the way down there trying to stay awake. So I think that's the smell, or maybe he was smelling the remnants of what had been in the trunk. But uh, he says, okay, I'm going to give you a series of tests. So he hits me with the field sobriety test. And, you know, he hits my lights with the eye, my my eyes with the lights. <laughs> He hits my eyes with the lights to see if they're going to dilate. And then he gives me a series of tests to follow the light with my eyes. And uh, the one that I thought he was going to get me on was to put my hands at my side, tilt my head back and close my eyes and tell him when 30 seconds had passed. So here I am, got my eyes closed. In my mind, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000. But I'm well aware that I'm under the influence of methamphetamine at this point. So my mind's going a little faster than a normal person's mind will be going, I guess. So when I got to 30, I did another count to 10. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000. And when I got done, I opened my eyes and I said, okay, I think that's about time. And he's looking at his watch, and he goes, okay, he said, uh, let, you want me to call a tow truck for you? And I'm like, holy shit, it worked. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, he calls the tow truck out. He waits with me. The tow truck pulls me out. I think he charged me like 80 bucks or something. I gave the dude like a $100 tip or something, like, I was just so happy that I wasn't going in the back of that cop car that, you know, I was uh, in, in, in a great mood, I guess you would say, you know. So he gets me pulled out. I drive up to the gas station, which is up at the top of the hill there, and act like I'm getting some fuel and watch the cop take off down the highway. And I run across the street and I retrieve you know, what I had stashed. I put it back in the trunk in the speaker box, which was my hiding spot. 
and now I'm heading to Anaheim again. So I'm heading down the 60. I'm supposed to take the 57 south, but somehow I miss it. Like, I was pretty much blacked out at this point. I don't really remember much at all. I know I missed that turn to the 57, and I ended up on the 605 heading south, which was the really long way. What I probably should have done was got off the freeway and turned around and went back to the 57, but, you know, like, my mind's going 100 miles an hour, and, you know, like, I was a mess. So, in the process of heading down the 605, I'm basically driving highly intoxicated at this point, not alcohol or anything, but, like, I'm swerving all over the road. I sideswipe a big rig and damage the car, and ultimately... I end up at a stoplight in Pico Rivera off of Washington Boulevard, I believe it was. Foot on the brake, knocked out, sitting at a red light. And all of a sudden, some L.A. County Sheriff deputies pull up on me. I don't realize that they pulled up on me. They're knocking on the window with their flashlight. And I, I look up. I just put my head back down. I wanted to go back to sleep. I didn't want to deal with this shit, you know? Because the, the gig was up, basically. The stash was still in the trunk. And, uh, you know, I had a bunch of ammo back there that I had purchased from somebody earlier in the night. And uh, luckily, though, I didn't have the pew-pew. But, you know, ballpark of... I don't know, 58, 60 grams of, of crystal, uh, about a half a pound of weed, and somewhere in the neighborhood of 244 caliber shells, and I got sheriffs all around me, helicopter circling, they get me out of the car, they get me cuffed, they put me in the back seat of their cruiser, and, uh, you know, they're searching the car, and I'm I'm in and out of consciousness at this point. Like, I don't know what's going on. But I remember looking up, and these sheriffs are over there high-fiving each other. Like, and, you know, they come back over, and they, to, to try to, uh, you know, get me to talk. And I told them, I want a lawyer. I said, but, uh, I said, man, you guys are high-fiving each other like you just took down Pablo Escobar or something. I said, man, there's a metric ton of this shit floating around in your city right now. I'm I'm nothing. And they kind of slammed the door and got pissy with me. <coughs> so they take me to a local hospital. And for the life of me, I don't know what the name of this hospital was. But they said that I had overdosed that night. Uh, now, I hadn't heard of that with meth. But... You know, I mean, maybe that was the case because I don't remember a lot. I was in and out a lot. But I remember I was awake again and I was at the hospital and, this, and they had me handcuffed to the to the gurney. And the sheriff was telling me, you need to piss, you need to piss in the cup. We need to do a drug test. And I was so dehydrated that that I couldn't put anything in the cup for the life of me, you know. And, uh, you know, because I had been a smart ass with these cops, you know, the one cop told me, he said, he said, either you're going to give us some piss or we're going to take it. And I'm like, what the fuck? You know, and so like, I'm really trying to push some urine out for this test. And, uh, yeah, I couldn't do anything. So the nurse come back over there with a friggin' catheter and, Man, I, my wrists were bruised for about a week because I was all clenched up like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and they just, Bloop. oh my God. That was one of the worst feelings that I've ever experienced. And you would think that it would have helped me to uh, get clean. Or maybe waking up the next morning in the Pico substation with nothing but sal ciders from an area that I'm not familiar with. I don't know none of these guys, you know? Or, uh, you know, I mean, there's a lot of things that you would think would have 
brought me to sanity and uh, had me change my life at that point. But I'm not one of those people. I got to bump my head over and over and over again before I figure something out, you know. But, uh, you know, long story short, I when I end up in court, those 60 grams or so had turned into about 10. My public defender said you're being charged with possession of 10 grams of crystal. And I'm like, wait, what? I said, okay, what well, what, what deal are they offering? <laughs> he said, they're offering a, a year in the county. And I said, where do I sign? Because I know, you know, the, those sheriffs were dirty as hell. And uh, I'm sure they sold it back to the community or something. You know what I mean? Like 60 grams turns into 10, 50 went somewhere. You know what I mean? And there was also like another $800 in cash that I had on me. That never made it either. So, I don't know. Those guys were padding their pockets. But, um, you know, I don't tell this story to glorify anything because there was nothing glorious about it. I'm lucky that I survived this night, to be honest with you. But, um, you know, the thing is, like, it don't, it don't need to be this way. Uh, if you're new into sobriety, welcome. Like, it's a wonderful journey. It gets easier as you go. Uh, you just got to play the tape all the way through. You know, if you're stuck on a decision, think about, okay, what could possibly happen from me doing this action? And if it could possibly end up in cuffs, maybe you might want to think twice and make a different decision. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's story. Family, fitness, and freedom are what helped me to change my life, and they can help you as well. And don't look at the mountain. Just start climbing.